Hello. For those who don't know me, I am Helen Hill. I'm a global inspirer, multi-award winning author, professional humanitarian. I'm also the global ambassador of the Rossi Foundation, International Germany, global champion of She Counts, a psychoeducational girl child empowerment program that happens outside of the schooling curriculum and i have also been 2021 patron of the south african council for business women and it feels like this moment is a full circle moment for me when i started out i started with the mandate that hester previous madame president hester de brain had given me to say please increase and escalate our levels of consciousness within the council um, with regards to all issues related to gender-based violence this is my last obligation official obligation as 2021 patron and it started with gender-based violence and i'm ending with gender-based violence for those who don't know my story, and I'm not going to go into it right now. Um, for those who don't know my story, I am a survivor of multiple rape, um, as well as an abuse survivor. Um, my not wanting to go into my story right now is because I am actually so sick of retelling my story. I'm equally sick of reading new stories and hearing new stories and um, I'm tired I'm tired of still needing to counsel an ever increasing number of victims of gender-based violence it was Einstein who said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. We have done 16 days of activism over and over and we have not only achieved the same results as a nation, but we have achieved degenerative results. Our president called out in one of his COVID speeches, he called out gender-based violence as the other quote unquote national pandemic. He has gone on to treat COVID-19 in a highly systemic way, which has proven to render positive results, less cases. Gender-based violence increased during COVID. We're still going to be doing and might be in, well, 16 days of activism happens again. But what has changed other than increased, escalated rape cases, abuse cases, and femicide cases? What is the subliminal message that we are giving the men and women and boy children and girl children of South Africa by not investing the time, the energy and the resources into gender-based violence. Are we saying that males, male lives matter more? Are we saying that male economic contribution matters more? Are we saying that male health matters more? And why have these results been degenerative? They've been degenerative because we got it right as a nation to start normalizing one of the most abhorrent social ills, a social abnormality. We started to normalize female violation in a culture of non-consequence. On that culture of non-consequence, when I was raped at 15 and I came out of 72 hours of sedation, 
the rapist who had raped me, a person who belonged to my church. I was allegedly his fourth victim. But he came out on 500 Rand bail and he lived in my community. Last year, a musician who was also a music mentor to young boys and girls was allegedly accused of raping a little 16 year old boy and he came out on 200 Rand bail. Are you telling me that between 1983 and 2020, 27 years later, bail, or is it 37 years, bail increased by an average of 200 Rand? What does it say? It says that the state is not doing enough. It says that something is rotten in the state of South Africa. As Shakespeare said, something was rotten in the state of Denmark in his Hamlet play. Why is it so rotten? It is rotten because we are treating gender-based violence as a cause and not as an effect of a cause. Gender-based violence is caused by the abuse of one of the most misconstrued, misused, and misunderstood concepts called power. And unless we are going to correct this in conjunction with rescripting our young boy children and girl children on issues of mutual respect, principle-centered behavior, emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence, if we start to educate our boy children in a different way, not to rely on their teachers to do it, but if we start to become more conscious and transformative in our parenting, we would be contributing to the systemic solution of gender-based violence in our country. If we start educating our girl children on the fact that worth and worthiness and authentic identity has very little to do or nothing to do with the presence or absence of a life partner, we will be teaching her the foundation to not settle, to not feel that she needs to settle for approval and acceptance from a partner or succumb to standards that do not speak to a inherent priceless value as a child of God. We need to get serious about doing this. I believe that the South African Council for Businesswomen can play an absolutely pivotal role in the context of prevention, in the context of empowerment, but if I look at what the council stands for, and the council stands for the economic empowerment of all South African women. And the council, as it stands, and the groundwork that Hester and I did last year, which now, thank you, Hanley, you are taking forward through the relationships that we forged with the National Shelter Association of South Africa, and um, and 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 power, and I know that you've met now with the South African, um, the National Shelter Association, and you're taking that forward. If we, as a South African Council for Businesswomen, can say that we stand for the economic empowerment of victims of gender-based violence, I believe that that would add more legacy to our already enriched 34-year legacy. And so, as Lynn Hill, as your ex-patron, as your continued member, I pledge my ongoing support to contributing towards the South African Council for Businesswomen not only becoming a mechanism and a platform for the economic empowerment of victims of gender-based violence, but I pledge that we become a trailblazing mechanism, a trailblazing means to an end 
And I know that if we can do this, and if each of us can become each member, each leader in this organization, each business owner can become an anti-GBV walking agency. Focusing on some of the systemic things that I have mentioned. Authentic in our identity. Remember that we teach others how to treat us and that children don't learn by what they are told. They learn by what they experience. So we need to be the change that we are seeking. We are not only the legacy makers in motion, but we are the systemic solvers of gender-based violence in motion. And it is now up to us to escalate our commitment towards making a difference in a state that certainly is not as committed to treating gender-based violence as it is to treating COVID. I thank you for this opportunity. I pray that it has spoken to your heart and to your soul. More importantly, I pray that you would activate that conviction to becoming the difference that we are needing within the context of gender-based violence in South Africa. Thank you.